The most obvious activity associated with software maintenance is fixing bugs, so let's start there. When a bug is reported, bug reports don't show up fully formed. Somebody has to notice there's a problem and that bug has to be reported. Once the software is released, those bug reports come in through a support organization. Typically, there's a level 1, level 2, level 3 support organization to capture the bug reports. With the level 1 being the frontline support, which is generally kind of script driven and usually involves users not understanding something about the software or not having read the manual. But it works up through level 2 specialist to level 3, which is typically engineering support. And the idea here is there's a screening and filtering function, so only the things that are likely to be actual real software bugs make it to level 3 so that they can be fixed. Interpreting the various symptoms and boiling them down to root causes takes a lot of time, and there are often duplicate reports, and sometimes those duplicate bug reports end up with different symptoms. So sorting that out is actually a considerable workload. Once a bug has been reported, it has to be prioritized. Not all bugs are born equal. Some are system killers, some are minor inconveniences, and some are things the software is not intended to do and end up really being a feature request. Prioritizing the bug should be done using a combination of frequency and business cost. A good way to do that is to use a risk table. In a risk table, the consequence severity goes by row and the probability goes by column. So you rank the consequence very high to very low, and what those bins mean should be consistent, but depends on your product. Very high might mean a catastrophic system failure, and very low might be a very minor annoyance. And then you take the probabilities and also bin them in a similar way. Very high might be it happens every day to every user. Very low might be it happens once a year to one user, and so on. Looking at the consequence and the probability, you can look at the intersection and figure out what the severity is. Notice that this risk table is asymmetric. This risk table has weighted consequence more highly than probability. So a very severe bug is going to get either a high or very high risk rating regardless of how often it happens. The importance of using this table is that some teams just rate bugs based on the consequence. Okay, it crashes the system, therefore we have to fix it but it doesn't necessarily look at the context. For example, if a system only crashes when a maintenance technician is doing a very obscure maintenance operation and the crash is easily recovered by the maintenance technician and takes maybe 10 seconds to deal with, maybe that's not so bad compared to a crash that happens to ordinary users during production operation. On the other hand, you may have a consequence that's moderately low, such as a misspelling, but it may happen all the time and really annoy users. And it could be that that misspelling is a higher risk to the company's success than the crash, depending on the circumstances. And if you don't believe that, think about what if you spelled the company's name wrong on the startup screen compared to a crash that happens to one user every thousand years. As long as it's not a life critical system, it could be that you want to prioritize fixing the company's name above fixing the crash, although probably you do want to fix both. Once you have a bug, you can't just say, hey, toss it to engineering, fix it. Often, fixing a bug requires someone with particular skills, and that person might have skills that have to do with the technology behind the software application in that area, or it might be the person who worked on the code, or you might have a system that's divided up into many subsystems that are geographically allocated to dispersed development teams, and so on. Thus, which bugs you fix may have to do as much with resources as it does with assigned risk. A related question is, do you want a quick and dirty fix, or do you want a solid re-engineering fix? Usually you want the solid engineering fix, but a lot of times the customers are screaming so loud you go with quick and dirty, and doing so accumulates technical debt, which we'll get to in a minute. After you have the fix, you have to validate the fix. There are two issues with that. First, you have to make sure you actually fix the problem, which surprisingly, some fixes don't actually fix the problem the way you expect. But the other is, you have to make sure you didn't break something else with that fix. And so typically, even for a relatively straightforward bug, you have to run a regression test to make sure you didn't break anything else. Finally, you have to package the fix and deploy it. Is it a hot patch? Is it a complete image? How are you going to get that fix to customers? Is a service call required? Is that fix batched up with other fixes so you can do occasional updates? And so on. Sometimes the pain and cost of deploying a fix for a low-risk bug is such 
that you batch it up and deploy it in a future scheduled release. Hopefully for the current product as an update, but sometimes it's even deferred to the next version that customers have to pay extra for. There's no one right answer for sorting through this, but the point is that all these decisions have to be made as part of the bug management and bug fixing process.